when you don't know the way of the Spirit. Oak House Church brings to you the word of life, which is able to build you up and offer you an inheritance among all those that are sanctified. Sit back and listen, and may your life become more like that of Christ as you encounter His Word. Okay, so today we are going to be looking at um, another aspect of our six credit load. When we say six credit load, is the 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 bulky nature of the course. It's actually a course that is supposed to take a minimum of five working days to finish. That is what we are compressing to do in a matter of uh, one or two hours. But God will help us. And that is why I said we must pay a very good attention and not to be distracted and not to be talking. You pay attention so that you can get the best. And number two, I also want to suggest that as many times as possible, you have opportunity to attend the class, even if you have attended it before. Until that thing becomes flesh and blood in you, make every effort, pay the price, suffer yourself, deny yourself a whole lot of things within this period to get as much as possible. The reason is because we have a very short time. Some of us, we are very, very behind time. We have not met, met up with all that we are expected. We are not where we are expected to be. We need to get as much as possible. If there is any time to pay that price, it is this time that we are in because we are lagging behind a lot in our spiritual endeavor, in our spiritual journey, in our spiritual pilgrimage. So, um, yesterday we talked about, um, we discussed about what? Responsibility. Okay. Fruit of the Spirit. Um, because of time, I might not be able to go and do a recap. But if I do a recap, definitely, even if I start now on this particular topic, even if I start at this very moment, even if I have started by 6 o'clock, we will not be able to finish it by 9 voluminous. It's a lot. Amen. So let's start. Let's see what we can do. And that is why I said any other time we are going to, for example, on Saturday, I'm going to be here again. I'm going to do a makeup class on um, the first course, which is the Christian service. So I'm going to do a makeup class on Saturday. And so to take as many questions as possible on Saturday, if I were you, I will come. It is not convenient for me. All this thing, it does go, what it means is that all this period, my life is shut down. And actually, that is what it meant to be. But then I just want to let you know what it takes to bring this thing across to us. Amen. So that you don't take it for granted. Take it is a matter of life and death. Your destiny is in all this thing we are talking about. It's not a just. It's not a just. Uh, it's not just a question of coming so that you you will be a worker from next year. You continue to be a worker and much more than that. We just want to get the people prepared to equip you, to train you, so that you become a world class Christian. Amen. This particular topic, the gift of the Holy Spirit. I don't know how to put it. 
I found out that the life, when he said the life of a Christian is meant to be supernatural, there is nothing natural about the life of a believer. That is the truth, the gospel truth. You know what it means? That is why Jesus said, give me John chapter 5, John chapter 3 verse 5. And Jesus answered, Verily, verily I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. Are you born of the flesh? You were born naturally. But God had done a mystery, a, 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 a work, a miracle. He has done a perform a work in us that made us not to be men and women of the flesh anymore, that are born of the flesh. That is why Paul said, quit you like men, men. In other words, stop living like men. Christianity is meant to be a life of the supernatural. There is nothing natural about a Christian. Where you live and operate, that is actually the realm that is not accessible to the natural man. That's why he said the natural man does not know or does not know the things of the spirit. They can't assess it because they are spiritually discerned. That is actually where we are supposed to be as Christians. The life of a Christian is meant to be the life of the supernatural, superior to the natural. And that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is of the spirit. Verse 7. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. Can we lay hands on that person that is there? Please be fast. The wind bloweth where it listed. That is where it wants to go. Give me, give me NIV so we can understand better. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear a sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with every man or everyone that is born of the Spirit. Are you born of the Spirit? Are you born of the Spirit? So this is your portion. This is how you're supposed to live. Anything short of this is not it. Say with me, so it is with everyone born of the Spirit. So you hear my sound, but you cannot tell where it's coming from, where I'm coming from, or where I'm going to. You can't assess me. I am invisible to the natural man. You are a mystery to a natural man because you live a life of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. That is what you are supposed to be, each and every one of us, everyone that is born of the Spirit. Not some, everybody. We must get to that point again. We must get back there. It's not, Christianity is much more than coming to church. It's much more than praying. It's much more than preaching. It is much more than all these things that we think. It's a life of the Spirit. Now, there is what the Bible calls the powers of the age to come. The powers of the age to come. Give me Hebrews chapter 6 verse 4. 
It is impossible for those who have once been enlightened and who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, verse 5, who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers, the powers of the coming age. You have tasted the powers of the coming age. The powers of the coming age is the gift of the Holy Spirit. You know what they are? That's what we're going to look at. And I trust that God will give us the grace to be able to, even if it is half of the journey we'll make tonight. The powers of the age to come is the power and the gift of the Holy Spirit. That is where we are supposed to be living, living in the, the frequency of the Holy Ghost. Not, not be crawling and crawling like men, men. Even when you are going through the water, somebody sees you in that state of affliction, he will know that there is something different about this man. The way you navigate through it, the way you navigate through those storms is different. Everything about you is different. Nobody can get you by one plus one is equal to two. So the powers of this age to come, what are they? Are they available for us? The Bible says, yes, they are available. That is why the gift of the Holy Ghost came. That is why the baptism of the Holy Ghost came. But you know, some people are still denying the baptism in the Holy Ghost. There is a power of the age to come. There is a life of that age when we get into that place. First Corinthians chapter 13, verses 9 to 12. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. Revelation knowledge is in part. Prophecies is in part. These are the powers of the age to come but we have access to it now. There is the aspect of our manifestation of the power or experiencing the power of the age to come We have access to it. But, hence, but when perfection comes, when you are made perfect, spirit, soul, and body, the imperfection will do what? Will disappear. When will that be? In the age to come. So, but he said, for now we prophesy in part. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish, childish ways or childish ways behind me. Verse 12. Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then, when we shall see face to face with the Lord, now I know in part, then I shall know what fully even as I am fully known. But this realm, we have a down payment. If the Holy Ghost is not given to us, then we will not be expecting this. The Holy Ghost has been given to us. And the Holy Ghost came in the fullness of his person. The fullness of his glory given to us, we have, been re we have received the Holy Spirit in our heart and we have received the baptism in the Holy Ghost. This is what makes us supernatural. That's why the Galatians 5 says, now that if you live in the Spirit, then let us walk 
Let's walk in the spirit. Let's no longer walk in the flesh. So that is why we must not be ignorant of this. We must be aware of who we are and what God has put in place for us and what God has given to us. We must be aware of it, but not ignorance. The Bible says, but we are not ignorance of the devices. Also, we should not be ignorant of who we are in Christ and what God has put in place. That is why he said he was praying that prayer in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7. He said that God may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened so that you may know the hope to which you are called. That's one. Then number two, this is what I'm talking about. This is number two. He said that you may know the exceed, you may know the riches of his glorious inheritance in you so that you know the deposit, the unsearchable deposit that God has put inside of us as believers. Investment that he has made in us, one of which is the gift of the Holy Spirit. But because we don't know, we live like men, men and we die like men, men. So let's go and watch and see what those gifts are that made us invisible. First Corinthians chapter 12. I want to read from verses 1 to 6. First Corinthians 12. Now about spiritual gifts. Brothers, I do not want you to be ignorant at all about this spiritual gift. I don't want you to be ignorant. You cannot afford to be ignorant. Please. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray by mute idols. Those idols and all of that, they are worshipping and doing all good. They are mute. They don't have money. They can't talk. They can't see. Therefore, I tell you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus because, and no one can say Jesus is the Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Okay, I don't want to dwell on this. Let me just go straight to what we have for today. There are, di there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit there are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. Now, to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. Every one of us is as opposed to the fruit of the Spirit, which everyone has. The nine fruit of the Spirit. We are supposed to manifest it. But when it comes to the gift of the Holy Spirit, there are nine of them. There is no one person, not one person has the whole nine gifts of the Spirit. The Bible says it is given to each and every one according to the measure of faith and also as the Spirit of God wills. It is not under your control. It is not your personal thing that you are going to use and do it whenever you want to do it. It is not. Now there are diversities, diversities of gifts. Go ahead, verse 8. To one, there is given through the spirit of what? Give me King James. This one has changed. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. Say the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge. Say the word of knowledge. By the same Spirit. To another, faith. By the same Spirit. To another, the gift of healing. By the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. By the same Spirit. To another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. 
all these gifts are supernatural. None of them is physical. None of them you can assess in this realm. When you hear that God has blessed us according to Ephesians 1, 3, that God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenlies, in Christ, is one of them. Spiritual equipment. At least everybody that is seated here today, at least you have one given to you. At least. At least you have one. But the problem is that ignorance is a very major challenge. Lack of knowledge of what these gifts are. Now, if you look at these nine gifts, they are divided. There are nine of them. <coughs> For the purpose of study, we, they are divided <coughs> in three different categories. The first three, which are the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and the discerning of the spirits. These are called revelation gifts. Revelation, they reveal things that you don't know. The Holy Spirit reveals things that you don't know. Jesus said in John chapter 16, in 13, 14, he said, when the Holy Spirit comes, the comforter, he shall show you, he shall teach you, he shall reveal to you even the things that are yet to come. The things you are not aware of. They are called revelation gifts. They reveal things to you. The second group, which is called the gift of faith, the gift of working of miracles, and the gift of healings, are called the power gift. They are for power. Then the third group, the last group, which comprises the gift of prophecy, the gift of diverse kinds of tongues, and the gift of interpretations of tongues, interpretation of tongues, are called the gift of utterance. That is, you speak with your mouth. By inspiration. They are inspirational gifts. You, you use your vocal cord to communicate it. You say it, you hear it with your mouth. That is what it is. So you see, the gift of what? The first one is the revelation gift. The second one is what? The power gift. And the third one is utterance. Now, these gifts, <clears throat> almost all the time, they work together in their manifestation. They almost work together. They don't just work in isolation. Rarely can you see it work in isolation. For example, in the raising of the dead, the raising of the dead is by the gift of the Holy Spirit. And there are three gifts that must be in operation if you can, if you're going to raise a dead man from the dead. They work together. For example, the gift of faith. You want to raise somebody from the dead, the gift of faith must be in operation. The working of miracle will be in operation. The gift of healing will be in operation. So they work together almost all the time. But for the purposes of study, for understanding and all of that, we have grouped it this way and then so that we can teach it and then in a way that we can understand it. Amen. The calibrations are what, once again, 
that's why I don't want because I rush these things. But um, let me see how far we can go today. I mentioned that there are three divisions of the nine gifts of the Spirit. Okay, the first three divisions, the first three gifts are what? Revelation gifts. They include word of wisdom, word of knowledge. And discerning of the spirits. What is word of wisdom? You know, I told you yesterday, a lot of you may be operating in these gifts, but because of lack of knowledge and ignorance. What is the gift of wisdom? How does the gift of the word of wisdom operate? The gift of the word of wisdom is a supernatural revelation by the Spirit of God concerning the divine purpose and plan in the mind and the will of God. It always speaks about the future. The, wis the word of wisdom, the gift of wisdom. It shows you the things to come. It talks about the future. I will show you scriptures. The word of wisdom or the gift of wisdom or the gift gift of the word of wisdom the gift of the word of wisdom is a supernatural gift that deals with the things that are to come is a revelation gift that shows you or tells you about what is ahead what is going to happen in the future the word the gift of knowledge or the word of knowledge okay tells you about the past and the present that of the gift of the wisdom tells you about what about the future and when you talk about the gift of wisdom which deals with the things that are to come in the future there are means by which they are communicated. You understand me? There are means by which they are communicated. That is which they are conveyed. One is by prophecy. You communicate the wisdom, the gift of wisdom, the gift of, the, of, of uh, wisdom, the word of wisdom. You communicate it by prophecy, I'm going to show you scriptures anyway, don't worry. You communicate it by prophecy. You also communicate it by utterance, by the things you say. You also communicate it by vision. It is communicated also by dreams. Remember what is the word of the gift of the word of wisdom? It tells you about future. Okay. Now, what do you think that Joseph had about the famine that was coming in Egypt? It was about the future. It is called what? The word of wisdom. How was it communicated to him? It was through dreams. He had a dream. He was told about what was going to happen in the future. Have you had a dream about what was going to happen? And then that thing finally happened. Have you heard it? And what do you think is happening to you? Because you don't know. As a gift of wisdom in operation. You think that gift of wisdom is only when you stand in the pulpit and say there is somebody here. That is all trance. That's the one that we're always looking out for. Is all trance. There is somebody here. There is somebody here. I, is something I, is going to happen so and so time and all of that. That's the one that you say, wow. Hey, hey, hey. You start shaking. That is why we have been deluded over the years and we have been crippled. You had a dream about what is going to happen in future. Or a dream about what is going to happen to someone. 
That is a word of wisdom coming in operation in your life. That is the word, the power of the age to come that you have access to. And you need to cultivate it and build on it so that it becomes frequent in your life. What do you think that happened to John in the island of Patmos? When God showed him about the things that are yet to come. What do you think that happened then? It was a word of wisdom. He told him about the future. What about Daniel? All those prophecies that Daniel had about the future, they are called the gift of the word, the word of wisdom. How was it communicated to Daniel? Through dreams. It was through dreams. What about Moses? What about Moses in Mount Sinai when he received the commandment? That was vision. It was the laws about how the children of Israel was going to live their life all through in the wilderness and all of that. How did he receive it? Through vision. It is still the word of wisdom. The word of wisdom. The word of the gift of wisdom is in operation. Okay, give me Jeremiah 25. Verse 30. Jeremiah 25, 30. Therefore, prophesy thou against them all these words. Thou do, do, do what? Prophesy. So you see, the, the word of God, the gift of the word of wisdom comes through prophecy. You say prophesy. So I'm telling you the different vehicles or the different means by which you communicate the, the gift of word of what? Wisdom. There are different ways. It's not only by utterance. When you stay here and then you just have a revelation about what is going to happen to someone. It's not only when you stand in the public and then you see. Sometimes in your prayer closet, you see things about someone. You know all those revelations that you used to have about something that is going to happen to somebody and all of that. These are the gift of word of wisdom that is in operation. And it's when you are praying and all of a sudden, sometimes it's dream, sometimes it's open vision. It can happen to you as an individual in your prayer closet. If you are maintaining a spirit field, like, it becomes like it will happen like water. Even concerning your life, you will see it. It's a gift that deals with the purpose and plans of God for individual and for a nation and for a group of people. It shows you what is going to happen. Give me John chapter 16 verse 14. John 16, 13, 14. Please, you just have to change this. You just have to get us another one. Or you change the head. How be it, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that he, that he shall speak. And he will do what? Show you things to do what? To come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall do what? Show it unto you as an individual. So, many of us have been operating in the gift of wisdom without knowing it. I just had a dream. And because of that, you just sweep it under the carpet, and then you move on. And you see, when you play down on it, when you don't when you don't value it, 
Because what you don't value, you cannot keep. When you don't value it, it will not be occurrence in your life. It will not. You will lose it. But this is actually what God has bestowed on you. That is what makes you invisible. When you have a revelation gift of the gift of wisdom, even in the Old Testament, it is operational. As a matter of fact, there are some gifts, there are some spiritual gifts that are more operational in the Old Testament, more than the, the New Testament project does not even have up to 20-30% of the operation of the gifts. For example, the gift of, um, of, of working of miracles is everywhere in the Old Testament. You rarely hear about the gift of working of miracles in the New Testament. There are very few. The, work, the gift of working of miracles in the life of Jesus Christ, they are not much. But when you go to the Old Testament, you see everywhere, including Adam, Abraham, I mean, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Elisha, Elijah, and all of all kinds. So you see, the word of wisdom in the Old Testament, give me Genesis chapter 6, verse 13, concerning Noah. How did God warn Noah about the impending danger that was going to come and that he should begin to build the ark? What gift was in operation? What gift was in operation? It was the gift of wisdom, the gift of the word of wisdom that was in operation. How was it communicated to Noah? It's through dreams. They slept, they had a dream. When God told Abraham, you are going to make, I will make you a father of many nations and all of that. What kind of gift was in operation? It was gift of word of wisdom that was in operation. How did God communicate it to him? Dream. Have you been having dreams? Have you been having, your own is that you have dream where the snake is pursuing you. And the wear masquerade is pursuing you. This is what may, you see, that is the vision God showed them the purpose, what God has in it has the, the plan of God for their lives. God reveals it to them. And then you come up because that is one of the most that is the most important of this gift. The 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 um this aspect of the power gift, that's the most important. Having a direction of your life. You know what God is sending you to do. You know the picture. You know where you are going to. You know where you start. So you are no more confused. You become focused. And when you are focused, your whole body is full of light. You are no longer distracted. And you, if you leave that particular vision that God has shown to you, your life will be a chaos. Your life will be miserable. So some of you have had these kind of encounters in the past. Go back again and revisit it. God has shown some of you where you are preaching the gospel and all of that and you abandon it. Because you want to make ends meet. You want to pursue money and all of that. Your interest is in this. That is the reason for the frustration. No matter, no matter the amount of prayer that was made over your life. Because the gifts and the calling of God, they are without repentance. God won't take it away. He won't change it. God doesn't make mistakes. He says what he means and he means what he says. Your life has been programmed and organized and, and, and kept. What about 
You, so when you go to the book of Genesis chapter 6, 13 to 18, you see, and God said to Noah, the end of the all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with the violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them. When all this thing that God was telling him, he was telling him about what he was going to do and how he's going to do it and what is his own part to play in all of this. Now, can you imagine Noah wake up again and start pursuing business and career and traveling abroad looking for where to establish new businesses and all that? You know what will happen to him? The same with Lot. When he was in Sodom and Gomorrah, where there was wickedness and all of that going on, God appeared to him and told him what he was going to do in a vision. The same thing in the New Testament. Give me Acts of Apostles chapter 11 verse 28. And there stood up one of them named Agabus and signified by the Spirit that there should be, and signified by the Spirit, that there should be a great death throughout all the world which came to pass in the days of Claudius, the Caesar. The Spirit of God communicated to him what was going to come to pass in the future. How did he communicate it to him? Prophecy. Because the Bible said there he stood up And he spoke. Acts of Apostles chapter 21, verse 12. Acts 21, 12. And when he heard these things, both we and they of that place besought him not to go up. You know what was happening here? It was when the prophet Agabus, go to, go to, give me verse 10. Give me verse 10. <coughs> And as we tarried there, many days there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. Yes. And when he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet and said, Thus says the Holy Ghost, So shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. And when he heard these things, both we and they of, the, of that place besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, What mean ye to weep and to break my heart? For I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Prophecy about the future. Gift of wisdom. Gift of the word of wisdom. Amen. Now I want to bring a distinction between the gifts of the word of wisdom and the gift of wisdom. They are two different things. The gift of the word of wisdom and the gift of wisdom. The gift of wisdom, the one that you know, is the one that deals with your how to navigate through life, day-to-day -day life. We find it out in the book of Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. He said, let the laws of this book not depart out of your mouth. Thou shalt make it. That is the wisdom that comes through the word of God. Through the studying of the word of God. You know it. That is the kind of wisdom that comes. It is to deal with the issues of life. And that is why he said in the book of Psalm 1 verse 1 to 3. He says, Blessed is the man that seated not in the, uh, seeketh not the castle of the ungodly, nor seated in the seat of scornful, nor standing in the way of sinner. He said, But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in the law of the Lord, that he meditates. 
He said he shall be like a tree planted by the river, wisdom that comes from God. And that is why he asked, he said in James chapter 1 verse 5, if anyone lack wisdom, let him ask God that giveth. This one is God that gives. Remember, we are talking about the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's not the Holy Spirit that gives. The one that the Holy Spirit gives come by a manifestation, by the will of the Holy Ghost. You are not in control, but this one is given to you by God, is operational in your life to Four seven, it come by the studying of the word of God, by getting yourself acquainted with the word. The Bible says in the book of Psalm one one nine, it says, "Through your counsel or through your word, I have been, I am wiser than my teachers. Your counsel, your word, your statutes have made me wiser than your counsel." In Luke chapter six verse forty eight, he says, "I tell you who a wise man is. He is the one that cometh to me and heareth my word and doeth it." He says, "He shall be like a man, like a house built on the rock. Your life is stable." as a result of this aspect of wisdom that comes through the studying of the word. But this one that we are dealing with, the gift of the Spirit, is the one that comes from the Holy Ghost. He is the one that gives it. So the question you're going to be asking yourself now is, how many of you have, how many of you have, been, uh, have operated in the gift of wisdom? The gift of the word of wisdom. How many of you have operated in it? From what I have explained now, the gift of wisdom or the gift of the word of wisdom is, has to do with what? Showing you about things in the future. And the means of communication can be through different means. It can be through prophecy. Somebody stands here and says, um, the Lord just told me to tell you that such and such thing is going to happen in your life. Yeah, that is prophecy. It can also come through vision. You stand and you see what is going on. What is the difference between vision and dream? In vision, you are not inside the act. You are not playing that part in them. You are just, you know what is vision? You are watching something. You are watching a picture. That is vision. But if you are dreaming, you are involved in that. So God knows the way to communicate it to you. Has God been at work in your life in the area of uh, gift of wisdom? Has he been? But because we don't know. And because you don't know, the operation of it, the, 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 the frequency with which it occurs and all of that is diminished. And that is why you still have to go back to the basic. You see the basic, the foundation that we've been talking about. When, as long as you keep playing with it, you have no. It's just like somebody who is in the university now. You are now in the university, but you did not. Maybe you just find a way. Somebody helped you and wrote the exam for you, or whatever it is. You carry expo and stuff like that, and you pass your jam and pass your WAEC, pass your your GCEs and all of that. When you now finally get to the university, it will show. It will re it will be revealed. That is the reason why when you when you play with the foundation, when you play with the found, you are not going anywhere. You can escape in the natural. You can carry a spoon and all those things and maneuver and manipulate your way and all of that and get to the top. And you can keep giving bribe and doing all those kinds of things and stuff like that. And you stay there. But it will still be obvious to the people that you have nothing to offer. You know I'll go on top. What is your website? So that we can reach you and all of You see what it was. How did he get there? The same way, when we are talking about foundation, 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 you are playing with it, you feel that you are a big boy, you are a big man, or you have, you know, I can't be doing foundation class. And another thing is that the word of wisdom, because the, when the word of wisdom comes, remember the person that is the source, it will surely come and it will pass. There is nothing you can do about it. But however, there are words of wisdom that are conditional. 
there are conditions attached to it. When you make, when you keep play this your part, then the, it will not happen. I give you an example in Second Corinthians uh, Chronicle chapter seven verse fourteen. You know that's popular scripture. If those who are called by my name, if they shall humble themselves. The people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin. I will heal their land. I will do this. I will do that. It's about the future. But it is conditional. If you don't maintain, so if you're a careful person, you go back and find that. That is why we are doing a lot of prayer. You see intercessor, the, the, the intercessor for the whole nation and intercessor for all whatever. We've been praying for Nigeria and praying for whatever. The condition has not been met. Yeah, God has said so because what he says to one, he says to all. That's what he said in the book of Mark 13, 31. But he said, he, he, so if you don't take time and meet the conditions... You are not going to see it happen. You know what God said to Jonah when he sent him to Nineveh? He said, go tell them. Because judgment was going to come, except they repent and turn away from it. It was a word of wisdom that was given to him, but it was conditional. What about the wisdom of Solomon? Was it word of wisdom or was it was it the gift of wisdom or was it the wisdom of God that was in operated? Which one? Hmm? It's not gift of wisdom. It's a word of wisdom for day-to-day -day activities, life. That was why a woman, a harlot, one harlot and the other one, you know, these harlots, yeah, not one, these harlots, they had babies and they, they were living in the same room. So in the night, they had babies. In the night, they were living, one that was sleeping carelessly, slept on top of, his, uh, of her baby, and the baby died. So... And he woke up in the night to feed the baby and only this, to discover that the baby was dead. So she exchanged it with the other baby that was alive. So when the woman that owned the baby that was alive woke up in the morning, he carried the baby, the baby was dead. He looked at the baby. This baby didn't look like my baby. What's going on? He, said, he looked at her, or the other one. He said, this is my baby, the one that is alive. And there was a problem. Problem of life, issues of life. And then they went to the king to resolve the matter. And Solomon, he was operating with the wisdom, the gift of wisdom that God has given to him. It's today, day to day. It has nothing to do with the future. Okay, you know what we do? We are going to cut this baby into the, the one that is dead. We will divide him into two. The one that is alive, we will divide it into two. And then you will take a part. Maybe the one that had the, 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 maybe one of the women, okay, take the head up and then the other one take the the trunk and then come to the one that is dead. The one that took the head of this one will take the trunk and then the one that took the trunk will take the head. You know what the woman that owned the baby that was alive, the one that had the baby that was dead, he said, yes, yes, he will divide it, divide it, divide it. And the other one said, the one that owned the baby that was alive said, no, no, my Lord, no, my king. Leave it, don't divide it, because if we divide it, they will die. Leave the baby to grow up. When he grow up, he will find his mother. King Solomon laughed and said, ha, 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 carry the baby and give it to the one that said they should not divide the baby, because that's the true owner, wisdom. You can get it through the studying of the word of God. That is why if you don't, because the gift of the spirit, the one that comes from the Holy Ghost, it is as the spirit wills.
But the one that comes from the studying of the word, that is why he says, study to show yourself approved, a right workman, not being ashamed of himself, but rightly dividing the word of truth. He said, through your word, I have known to keep my feet from the destructive tendencies in this life. You know what to do. The word of God is light unto your is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your word, unto your path. I've told you the difference between the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge. What is the difference between the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge? The word of knowledge is a supernatural revelation by the Holy Spirit of certain facts and mind concerning the things, certain facts that God wants to show you, but it is always has to do with what? The past or the present. It has nothing to do with the future. So if it is anything that you are seeing in the dream or the vision or somebody is prophesying to you that has to do with the future, it means it is the word of what? Wisdom. If it has to do with last year or yesterday or before you came here, so and so thing happened. Or there is somebody here, this is what is happening to you or this is why you are here. He's talking about the present. It is called the word of knowledge. How do you come, how, what is the vehicle through which you have the word of knowledge? Because you see, that is another problem. Because, because you have not, you think it is only when, yes, you have those of them that is in the fivefold ministry. They have access to this, they operate in their ministry and all of that. But it is not limited to the fivefold, it's for everybody. So you can stay in your closet where you are praying or where you are worshiping God or where you are studying the word of God or whatever and then the word of knowledge will be revealed to you. It's a revelation knowledge. And it will come either through vision when you have a vision or sometimes when you have dreams. It can be communicated through dreams. It can be communicated through vision. It can be communicated through utterance. It can be communicated through prophecies. It can be communicated through any of these means. It's not limited from the pulpit. There is somebody here. How many of you have had this experience? I just know inside of me that this is what is, that this is who this person is. This is what this person is up to. And what you are thinking in your heart is what is happening word of knowledge in operation. Word of knowledge is not a natural knowledge like the knowledge we learn from the nature. They are supernaturally revealed by the Holy Spirit. It is not a profound knowledge of the Bible word. It is not the type that you get from the word of God. By studying the word of God, you have knowledge of God's word. You are vast in the knowledge of God's word. That's one aspect. It's not the word of knowledge. That one is, it comes as a result of the studying of the word of God. But they were talking about the gift. The word of knowledge, which is the gift of the Holy Spirit. It is under the control and the manifestation by the Holy Spirit. It is as the Holy Spirit wills. But yet, yeah, there is one that comes from discerning. That is through the studying of the word. The Bible says that those who through exercise, who through use, have exercised their senses to know good and evil. See, there is one that comes through the owner. I'm going to tell you, but let me just, maybe because I, want, I wanted to tell, say it at the end. How do you begin to operate in these gifts of the Spirit? How do I navigate? How do I, how do I make sure that this thing is happening in my life and all of that? Simple you will always know one thing, one eternal truth. You start from the known to where? To the unknown. 
you start from the known to the unknown. You cannot start from the unknown to the known. You've got to, first of all, for example, the gift of faith, for example, or the gift of word of wisdom, okay? The gift of word of wisdom, word of wisdom. You start with the wisdom, the one that you can relate with, with the one that comes through the studying of the word of God. So you give your attention to the studying of the word first. From there, you graduate, you navigate to the next. That's one way you get there. Faster. What about the word of knowledge? The word of knowledge also comes through if you want to operate in the word of knowledge, then study the word of God. Begin to study the word of God. Begin to divide the word of God. Study to show yourself approved, a right workman, not being ashamed of himself, but rightly dividing. Start from there. You start from the known to the unknown. Don't start, don't try to start from the unknown. Because even when you start from the unknown and you start praying and all of that, you are going to be having a lot of disjointed vision and dreams. Disjointed. And when you see it, you believe that it is, is true. Because the Bible says, test every spirit, everything that you are seeing from there. Whatever your prophecies, you test it. How do you test prophecy? Based on the word of God. Not that you, 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 you hear one dream or you see one thing in the whatever. And because devil can show you one there. He can give you a word of wisdom. Satan can give you a word of a fake one. He can give you a word of knowledge, fake. He can give you prophecy, fake. The signing of spirit, the same thing, fake. But because you don't have roots on the ground. And when they begin to tell you to refrain your step that what you are seeing or what you are saying is not true, you will think that we are stupid, we don't know what we are saying. That you are better. There is a knowledge that you get through there is knowledge that you gain through close work with God. Okay? There is a knowledge that you get as a result of your close work with God. That is not the word of knowledge. I give you an example in the case of um, Eli and Samuel. Someone was hearing the word of the Lord. He didn't know who was calling him. He thought he was Eli. Okay? So he would go back and say, Lord, did you call me? He said, no. And he went back to sleep again. He heard a voice again. And he got up, he said, he went back again thinking that he was Eli. And because Eli had had a walk with God, he understood. And so he, tell, he told Samuel, when next you hear that, say, Lord, speak. It was experienced through closer work with God. And there are many examples like that. So that one is not word of knowledge on the other time. It's as a result of your close work with God. And so it gives you advantage. You are well balanced. When you have a close work with God, and when you study your word, you have a close work with your Bible and all of that. And then it gives you access because God himself does not want your life to be destroyed. Because there are many voices out there. Many have gotten there, have gotten in the realm of the spirit and all of that. And we are lost. You can't, you can't trace them. You can't find them again. They are lost in the spirit. All the equipment, spiritual gadget and the equipment we have used to locate them, track them in the realm, they are, is no, no signal. Haven't you heard about a plane that took off and nobody saw them, saw the plane anymore? They went into the sea, sat everywhere, they didn't see them. There are Christians like that. Let me give you an example of word of knowledge in the New Testament. I'll give you one in the Old Testament so that we can move. Acts of Apostles chapter 9 verse 10. Acts of Apostles chapter 9 verse 10. 
to 12. And there was a certain disciple, <clears throat> excuse me, a certain what? Who is a disciple here? There's an ordinary brethren, normal, not bishop. We shall see what happened, how he got the word of knowledge, whether it was somebody, whether he, he said, my, my, my people, my people. And there was a certain, a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and to him said the Lord in, in what? Ananias, and he said, behold, I am here, Lord. Verse 11, and the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas. For one called Saul of Tarsus was for. Behold, he prayed, and he and had seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. This is instruction. This is word of knowledge. He was telling him what was happening. There was a man called Saul. He is praying right now. Go to him. He himself has seen himself, you, laying hands on him. You have seen him laying hands on you, and he is coming to lay hands on you. So he sent him. Who was he? A believer, just like you and I. How did he get it in? Vision. Have you had vision before? Have you been having vision? You have not even never had a vision. But have you had a dream before? How many of you have had a dream? How many of you have had a dream? <clears throat> if they ask a question and you have had it, raise your hand. Is it, is there is a, it's prophetic. You know, you are trying to be holy. What about Peter? In Acts of Apostles chapter 10, Cornelius was in a vision, open vision, in a trance. He heard it, he saw it, he watched it like a video and said, that man is on his way. Acts of Apostles chapter 10 verse 9 to 19. Because I don't have the time. If we start reading all of them, we will not be able to. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew near unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour, verse 10. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven open and a certain vessel descending unto him and as it had been a great sheet knit at the floor, at the four corners, and let down to the earth. And wherein were all manner of four-foot beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and the fowl of the air. And there came a voice to him, Arise, Peter, kill, and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God had cleansed that that called not thou common. This was done three eyes, and the vessel was received up again into her. He just saw a vision. Verse 17. Now, while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. You know, when you talk about vision, do you guess how the vision occurs? How many, how many minutes? Like a flash. Like a flash. It's a vision God has shown me. If you don't understand how it works, if you, don't, if you are not sensitive, that's why you have to be sensitive in the things of it. That's why you don't, the Bible says, study to be, to be what? Quiet. You can't be a talkative. You can be talking, you can be saying something, but inside you, you are quiet, you are listening.
God has been talking to us many, many times, but we are not hearing because we are so busy. Have you ever been in a room? Have you ever been in your room and the music was playing in the room? There was a music or you have um, your phone block your ears. And then somebody beside you outside the room will be calling you and you will not hear. Has it happened? That's how it is. When God is speaking, you will not hear because your heart is noisy. Spiritual things are very, very, very... If you're not careful, they will just come, vanish. That's how it works. First Samuel chapter 9. You remember Saul and the missing ass. The ass got missing. First Samuel 9, 3. Anyway, okay. And the asses of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. And the Kish said to Saul, his son, Take now one of his servants with thee, and arise, go seek the asses. And he passed through Mount Ephraim and passed through the land of Shalisha, but they found them not. Then they passed through the land of Shalim, and there they were not. And he passed through the land of the Benjamites, but they found them not. So he kept searching and searching and searching. And then in verse 15, in verse 15, he says, Now the Lord had told Samuel in his ear a day before Saul came, saying, God has said to him in his ear, There was going to come a time, a man that will come. That is word of word of what? Wisdom. But what Saul had was a word of knowledge. That the missing ass. He now went to inquire from Samuel when he finally met Samuel. So Samuel now gave him the word of knowledge. You are the chosen of the Lord to be the king of Israel. And I said the discerning of the spirit include the good, the bad, and the ugly. Both Satan and God, spirit, and all of that. You see all of them there. There is a lot of misconception. You see, when you say somebody is not discerning or trying to find fault, you say, I see, you know some people that said, um, the spirit of love is not here. That these people don't have love. That God revealed to me that the spirit of love is not here. It's judgmental. You are, a, you are sorry. It's not true, it's a lie. That person is living in the flesh. Two things are happening there. Is it that the person is very manipulative or Satan is the one speaking to him? Because the accuser of the brethren is Satan. When, when you see that, when you say that God is telling you something bad around about this person, is a lie from the pit of hell. As a matter of fact, if you are very honest with yourself and allow that light to turn to you, you will never say that kind of a thing again because it will reveal to you your own nature, the world, what is going on in, in your life. You see, you will see that you are worse than that person that you are accusing fingers. So the discerning of spirit is for you to see in the realm of the spirit. Not to find fault with someone. Not to be seeing evil spirit and all of that in the life of another person or in the midst. He say in this church. Because you see, when we do this, the next thing that you are going to do, when we encourage the discerning of the, the gift of the spirit to stand, you know, of functioning and all of that. You know, there are people who are going to take advantage of it to 
run down the church to bewitch people and to get at people. That's why you hear in the church, he said, there is one prophecy that said that the, the pastor's wife is the cause of all the problems that you have in the church, that the Spirit of God just revealed to you. If it's, you try it here, try it one day. If they don't bind your hand and feet, eh? and throw you to the dustbin, It is not the power to discern forth of others. It is not the power or the gift to uncover human faults and failures. That's not what the discerning of spirit is. It is, you don't use it to say you are casting out the spirit of hatred. In the, you know people who are doing deliverance, the spirit of hatred or the spirit of uh, lust. No, it's a loss of the flesh. You can't cast it out. Hatred is a, is a sin of the, of the flesh. You can't cast it out. What we are dealing with, in the, when, when you want to cast out Satan, maybe God shows you or you discern that there is a spirit in operation in the life of this person. You cast that spirit out and the problem will stop. Haven't you seen people who have wounds in their body or maybe the leg or the hand and all of that with all the medications and all of that nothing is happening, it keeps getting worse there is a demon that is operation in that cast out that demon out that, that wound will heal so you see that is why through use through use experience it will show you it will show you a whole lot of things. You operate based on experience of the word of God or what you have God has done in your life. It's just like um, if you see a medical doctor, for example, who are who is very deep into the medical practice. He's been he has have about 30, 40 years experience in that field and all of that. And then most of the time you walk into the hospital and you are talking to him about the problem he has, you will be able to tell you exactly what is the problem and define how it is going on in your life. He hasn't done any tests and all of that. Is that because he has seen over time? So that is how it is with the signing of the spirit. So now, you can, you can, through the discerning of the Spirit, you can discern the similitude of God. You know what you mean by similitude of God? You can, you can, not the physical aspect of God. Nobody has ever seen God in the physical. But you can have a glimpse in the, either through vision or through dreams, you can see God. A lot of people have seen Christ. I had an encounter with Jesus Christ, either through open vision or in a dream. Like Moses, in the Acts of um, Exodus 33, verse 20 to 23, he had an encounter with God. He saw, he had the similitude of, when he said, God, show me your glory. And God said to him, no one can see my face and live. Well, how do you think? And God said, I'm going to show you my back. You are going to stand on the rock and I'll show you my back and all of that. How was it going? How was it happening? It's through vision. So through that, you see the similitude of God. You can also, you see in Isaiah 6, chapter 1, Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1, how that Isaiah saw. He said, I saw the Lord. Is it physical that he saw him? was in a vision. That is the similitude of God. You can have an encounter. Some people have had an encounter. That's one of the things we say, an encounter. You see God. You see Christ. And a lot of people have seen him, even in our meetings and all of that. They come to give testimony. Some of you, you saw a, 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 a fire, you know, upon the head of everybody or the glory of God or something in the realm of the spirit. That is discerning of the spirit. It's a gift. And the Bible said to one, he, he gives the discerning of the Spirit. To another, to another, to another. He's a gift. He's given to you. 
And you are giving that for the edification of the church, for building the church. Not for your own, it's for the church. Although there is the aspect of the one that has to do with you. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon where? <clears throat> Did he see the Lord with his eyes? No. Sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and he strained filled the temple. Vision. The similitude of God. You can also see the similitude of Jesus Christ. A lot of people have seen it, like John in the island of Patmos. It was Jesus Christ that he saw. Revelation chapter 1 verse 10. Let's look at it please. Fast. Revelation chapter 1 verse 10. I was in the spirit in the last day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest, write in the book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia. What kind of vision is, what kind of gift is operational here? Is it the word of wisdom or the word of knowledge? If you get it, I'll give you Mr. Biggs. Is it, is it word of wisdom or word of knowledge? It's true vision. Word of what? Clap for you. Eh? Word of what? Clap for yourself. Hey, you don't want to clap for yourself. You are not sure. I say clap for yourself, you got it. It's a word of wisdom. He's telling him about the state of the church. What is happening to the church in Ephesus? I mean, the seven churches in the Asia Minor. It is a present. He was telling him the state. This is how the church is. Where are they? Word of knowledge. I say word of knowledge. Did I say wisdom? Is word of word of knowledge? Is word of knowledge? You got it. Saying, "I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last." What thou seest, write in the book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus and Simna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Tyre, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia and uh, Laodicea. Verse 12 says, And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Go fast, please. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paths with a golden girdle. His head and his hair were white like wool and white as snow, and his eyes were as the flame of fire. And his feet like unto the fine brass, as if they burned in the furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he laid, and he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shined in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his hand right upon me. If it was an angel that he saw, and he fell down at his feet, he would have refused it. And he laid his hand right upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. Anytime you have an encounter with Jesus, or with the Spirit of God, or angel, or whatever, the first thing that you hear from them is fear not. If it is Satan, he will tell you to be afraid. You can see the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is a person. You can see him. He is not in a dream or vision. And as a matter of fact, I think there was one lady that was giving us um, a testimony about the dreams that she had. He said she saw one giant big dove. He said it was a dove. 
he was trying to this he said there is no way she can but she, he, he can picture it in her mind what she saw in the dream it's like what John, John saw in the island of Patmos when he was in the spirit on the Lord's day in Revelation chapter 4 verse 5 he saw the seven spirit of God before the throne so he had access to the throne of God and he saw the seven. I, I don't know. Don't, don't ask me. He's not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He's a mystery. He, he, I don't, I can't explain it. But he's the seven spirit. The spirit of God in one. Revelation chapter 4 verse 5 tells us. And out of the throne proceeded lightning and thundering and voices, and there were seven lamps of the fire of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. He saw. <coughs> These are this, <coughs> excuse me, the signing of the spirit. So, yeah, like I said, you can see the spirit of the devil, the evil spirit. You can also either you see or you hear in the realm of the spirit about Satan or God or about the spirit of man. Have you <coughs> have you ever had a, a dream where you saw someone talking to you in a dream? Somebody that you know. Or you talking to somebody that you know, or somebody that you know is talking to you in the dream. So what is it? Is it discerning of spirits? That's how it happened. The problem that we always have is that discerning of the, the gift of the spirit must be operating from the pulpit. If it is not on the pulpit, it must either be one great man of God or woman of God. That is actually what I want to destroy. That wrong paradigm. And all the people that we have shown you in the scripture on all, all of this, none of them have been from the pulpit. It's in their closet. Abraham was doing his business and his own thing, his own way, and all of that. When God is saying, come out, let me show you. Can you look at, can you count the stars in the air, in the sky? Can you count the number of sun on the seashore? He says, so shall your seed be. Where, was he in the temple or the synagogue? He was even snoring, I guess. He must have been snoring and when he had that vision. And God showed him. And he followed it. When God said, leave your father, your, your, your mother, your land, your kindred, your people, and unto a land where I will show you. Is it that God appeared to him face to face and was talking? He was in a dream. Now, there is something about discerning the spirit behind an operation. When somebody is operating, something is going, maybe somebody is preaching, or somebody is talking to you, or somebody is casting out devil and all of that. There are so many people that are using evil power to do the thing they are doing. So you will be able to discern, you see what is happening in the realm of the spirit. You know the spirit behind it. If you read the Acts of Apostles, chapter 16, verse 17, you see. The spirit behind the operation in the life of um, a young uh, lady, and the name followed Paul, and the same followed Paul and us, and cried, saying, "These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show us on, who show unto us the way of what salvation." The guy was preaching, but the spirit behind what he was saying, what was actually leading him was not the spirit of God. There, there are many of them in the church. There is one that had a very big church in this Lagos. Till today, a lot of people are confused whether this one is genuine or not. They don't know. They can't, they can't discern. The same followed Paul and us and cried saying, these men are the servants of the Most High God, which show us unto the way of salvation. Verse 18. And this did she many days. What is she preaching? What is she telling them? What was she preaching to Paul? He was preaching Christ. That Jesus Christ is the Savior. He is the Lord. 
if you believe in him and you will be saved and he will take care of you and he will protect you and he will do all this and all of that and he will heal you and as a matter of fact come out let me show you that God Jesus is alive and all of that you think you will so how will you know that this person is wrong but is his negative spirit is evil spirit is the same thing till today so many of them are behind the pulpit they don't have the spirit of God you won't be able to discern but there is a lot of blindness and did this she many days but Paul being grieved turned and said to the spirit I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her and he came out the same hour he had been following them for many days and be preaching and Paul did not do what do anything about it for many days how come it was that particular day that he had to do it or that was when he had that encounter he saw in the realm of the spirit he now saw the spirit behind this woman that it wasn't the spirit of Christ that it was the spirit of Satan that was doing all this and then she he bound and cast it out and that case ended You can also have an inward witness. That is the one I'm talking about. You can also, because the Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit. And again, the Spirit of God bears witness with our own spirit that we are. They say, there is an evident witness inside of you. It's by the Holy But that one comes as a result of uh, your close walk again with God. When you maintain a close fellowship with God, and all, your, your spirit is alive. Your spirit is active. You pick signals when you come into any environment. You'll be able to discern that this is wrong and this is it. You come to a place, there's somewhere you are telling me today, you just, once you come, you will know. That is discerning of the spirit. It comes from the inward witness. It's because somebody's spirit is alive, is sharp. You come to any environment, you will pick it. You come to a place where there is going to be danger and all of that. You might not hear my son, my son, run for your life because there is danger. You might not hear it, but inside you become uncomfortable. What he's telling you is that get up from that place and leave. Something bad is about to happen. That's how you escape. And guess what? The Holy Spirit is... A lot of people have lost their life as a result of this. God is warning them and warning them and telling them and trying to take different means to communicate the truth to them. But they fail to hear because activities, activities, activities is driven by activities. And they have met their water. That's why sometimes you wake up, you, more, you, you are going to try. You know some of you, God has been showing mercy and showing mercy and showing mercy and showing mercy. Some of you are not sensitive to the spirit. So, but God has a way to make up for your lapses and all of that. That's why he gave you the leadership of the church and all of that. Am I going to stop it? What am I gaining from you for, so that I will be the Lord over your life? Or what? what you think I have not finished with my family, it is you. And somebody wants to make a journey, want to take a step and all of that. You fail and you don't know whether that journey is going to work out well. What is going to happen? And what I'm telling you, I'm telling you based on the experience I have. I've been doing this business for more than 20 years. Very little experience anyway. One day I was about when I used to take um, public transport. It was in Abuja. I came to Zuba to take transport bus to Enugu. I came. I entered. I sat down. They were about to, the guy who was about to start collecting the, um, what do you call it again? The transport fare. I didn't want to give him. I didn't know why. The next thing, I was just angry. I just came down from the bus. I felt so uncomfortable. All of a sudden, I just stepped down immediately. And it was about to be filled up. I went and entered the next bus and sat in front. 
immediately after that they just got to the next person and they take to go we followed up about an hour later by the time we get to local jail we saw the boss inside the bush what happened he was talking to me get down sometimes you might not hear them for there are so many ways God speaks you have not thought done about how to be led by the spirit there are many ways God lead us and there are unique ways that God because the way he leads you might not be the way he leads me but basically he leads us through the spirit there is a witness in your spirit the Holy Ghost bears witness to your spirit that this is it. And sometimes you may hear and hear wrongly. So even when you say God was telling you, God witnessed it, don't just, don't just test every spirit. And the mouth of two or three witnesses, every truth is established. Don't just say God told you. Paul had the revelations and all three years. And after what did he do? He came back to Jerusalem, to Rome, to present what he had maybe in case he had wrongly he said he showed it to those of them who were ahead of him and they con they concord with him and say yes it's the same thing what you are hearing and what you heard and all of that is in order you can go <laughs> but what do we do there because everybody has we we can hear from god and all of that okay and once you hear, you have heard. Nobody is going to tell you anything. Contrary. Sometimes you might hear rightly, and sometimes you might hear. But in order to be sure, because if you hear wrongly and you take off and you take off in the wrong direction, you know what's going to happen? Destruction. And you now come back and be asking us to help you. If we don't help you, you will say that we are wicked. I have about 30 minutes to finish, but I will not even be able to. Let's look at the gift of uh, faith. I'm going to distort some of your some of your religion now with this one. Some of you are going to look at me in wonderment. The gift of faith is a divine gift or enablement that comes from the Holy Spirit that enables you, that enables what is said or spoken or your desires or what spoken by God to ultimately come to pass. It is a human or divine miracle or trance or certainty, either cursing or blessing creation or destruction, removal or change that will eventually come to pass when spoken under the inspiration of special faith. is either called the gift of faith or special faith. Let me explain what I mean. The gift of faith is for receiving. The gift of faith is not for giving or working is to receive a blessing. When someone has the gift of faith, it is enablement by the Spirit. It is quickened by the Spirit. It is an inspiration that comes from the Holy Spirit. It is a gift of faith. It enables you to speak words that will come to pass. It will enable you to, to make, to pronounce a curse and it will be established. It is either for blessing or for destruction. It can be used for blessing. It can be used for destruction. It can be used to receive a blessing from someone. I'm going to give you scriptures. Do you remember about uh, Joseph? How Joseph blessed his children? Ephraim and, uh, I mean, sorry, Jacob, how he blessed his children, Ephraim and uh, Manasseh. When, how did you, what, what do you think was in operation? It was a gift of faith. 
he, because believe what you are saying in your heart that God that is going to come to pass. When Isaac was blessing his son, he said, Go and make venison for me so that I'll eat that my soul may bless you. Did he hear from God anything? No hearing, no discerning of the spirit, no word of knowledge, no nothing. It's a gift of faith that was in operation. It's the gift, is is so, and that thing that he spoke concerning his son followed him all through the rest of his life. So it, it can happen either for blessing or for cursing. What do you think to what do you think about Joshua that spoke to the son? What do you think that was happening? What gift do you think he was in operation? He was just believing God. He's not believing God anything. He's a gift of faith. He spoke. Men in the old, you see, everything they did was by supernatural, controlled by the super. That is why I said to you in the beginning, the life of every Christian is to be a, is supposed to be a super, is a supernatural living. When you are saying things, you are saying by the inspiration of God. The Bible says, men of old they speak. He said, no word of prophecy that came by private interpretation but men spoke as they were moved by the holy ghost they spoke as they were moved by the holy spirit they spoke give it to me um uh, first peter is it first peter 1 18 or 2 18 find it for me please help me Second Peter 1 21. 2 Peter 1 21. 2 Peter 1 21. Uh, for the prophecy came not in the old time by the will of man, but holy men of God did what? They spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. You see, it was the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Spirit was in operation. That is why there are, there, are, there are prophecies or there are words, spoken words. That is why, see, if I were you, don't take words that you hear from here for granted. Sometimes it is under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. It is the gift of faith that is coming. You prophesy, you speak by faith. It, that thing comes. It, there is a difference between speaking in obeys on the word of God. There is another one about speaking. By, and you know when the spirit of faith is in operation, a wise man, you will know. But because you are ignorant and all of that, even when it's happening, and you won't know that these are the words that is going to change your life forever. It is your moment, your opportunity, your time. That is the reason why when you come to church, when you sit down, especially in this church, we, we, we don't come here to play game. We don't play game with people's life and destinies. And I know that I can't help anybody. There is nothing I can give to you. I can't help you. I don't have what it takes. If I don't depend on him to do that, there is nothing. It doesn't matter how you see here. You may be crawling today. You may be eating from the gutter outside till now. But the word of God will come, the gift of faith come, and the man begins to speak. And your spirit is open and that thing hits you. Even if it means heaven to come down and meet the earth and kiss the earth for that miracle to happen, it will happen. That's how this gift of faith. Now, give me, give me Psalm 109, verse 1. This one is a negative prophecy concerning Judas Iscariot. 
words that we have spoken. Hold that peace, O God, of, of, my, pray, of my praise. Just go down fast. For the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful are open against me. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. As you were talking about Judas. They compassed me about also with words of hatred and fought against me without a cause. For my love, they are my for my love, they are my adversaries. But I gave myself unto prayer, and they have rewarded me evil for good and hatred for my love. Set thou a wicked man over him, and let Satan stand at his right hand. When he shall be judged, let him be condemned, and let his prayer become sin. Verse 8. Let his days be few, and let another take his what? Office. Let his children be fatherless, and his wife a widow. Let his children be continually vagabond and beg. Let them seek their bread also out of their desolate places. Let the extortioner catch all that he had, and let the stranger spoil his life. You know, uh, words, uh, David was the one speaking under the inspiration of God. He was speaking concerning Judah. I mean, Judas is carrier. You see, I told you the gift of prophecy. I mean, the gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit. They walk together. They don't, is not do as one. He is speaking by faith here. And at the same time, is the gift of wisdom that is in operation. Talking about the future. But it's by faith because everything is controlled by faith. He was speaking by faith. The gift of faith was in operation. Knowing that what you are saying is going to happen. Joshua 10, verse 12. Please fast. Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the, in the sight of Israel. He said in the sight of Israel. <laughs> How can? What, what gave you that audacity? In the whole congregation of the children of Israel, he stepped out. And the Bible says he spoke to the son in their presence. Every of these men, they operated under the gift of the Holy Ghost. That Holy Ghost, now the Bible tells us we have a better things. We have a better covenant made upon better promises. In those days, the thing will come upon them and they lift and go. But today, the Holy Spirit is indwelling us. We have received the gift. God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenlies. If you actually look at your life, you find out that you are operating in one or more of these gifts of the Holy Spirit. And you know, it's rare, it's rare for you to find one that is just operating on his own. And he's... And then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel, and he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajah. <laughs> Did the son stand? What gift is in operation? The gift of faith. Faith. It's a gift. They couldn't have done what they did outside of the spirit. That is why Jesus said, without me, you can. There is absolutely nothing you can do. So what he means is that your life will be totally or completely immersed in this. That is what we call the baptism in the Holy Spirit. It's the baptism in the Holy Spirit. It's not the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's the baptism in the Holy Spirit. You are immersed inside the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit covers you. So he overshadows you, controls your life. And that is actually what it's supposed to be. Hebrew 11.33. When he said, men who through what? Faith. Subdue kingdom. What do you think that drove? What do you think that made Daniel? He saw, he saw lions with his eyes. They opened the door. He saw the lions and the man was calm. <clears throat> It was grace. It was because he fasted and he prayed. 
How many times have you fasted and prayed? You know, the day I told you, I was praying in the night. If you see the tongues, I was, if you see my tongues in the night, that night. And if you see as I was pointing, at, you know, because it was, it was that time you, you those voices in the house. You just wake up in, in the day, in the day broad time. You'll be hearing people talking in, in, uh, in their house, not my house. And I sensed there was fear or there about. So I got up in the night around 12 o'clock. I was angry. I was, I was angry. I came out in the night. I was praying in the tongue, in tongue and I was declaring things. I was pointing. I was dealing with all those powers and all of that and all of that. The next thing, the priest started to blow and carried one leaf on the floor. If you see the race, I ran. God said, as I was running, I just looked back. I saw it was a paper on the ground. The wind was carrying. Thank God nobody saw. Me. So you can be praying and be fasting. You be on your knees fasting and praying. You see, be afraid. Not to talk about when they carried you into the furnace of fire. You see, they, they say, the king told them, he said, go and increase the, 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 the heat of that furnace. Increase it by seven times. The men that came to threw them inside the furnace, the heat, they didn't come close. Oh. The heat that was coming from the furnace killed them. What about and this guy they said the king we will not be careful to answer you in this matter but in these last days they that know their God know their God how operating the gift of the spirit that is what the God is going to when you hear that God the glory and the power of God the glory of God is there are two things I told you. The glory of God is his power. The glory of God is his, his presence. The power of God is the demonstration of the power by the Holy Ghost. Manifestation of the powers of the world to come. When they say there, you, you see the kind of boldness and kind of confidence that you wear. And you know that it has nothing to do with you. They that know their God. The time is coming. That is why I said we don't have the time. We don't have the time. There is no time. You see this thing that you, are, you, you have your confidence and you are building it and all of that. At the expense of your destiny. At the expense of your soul. When the time comes, you will say that I said so. The warning kept coming and kept coming and kept coming from this altar. Who through faith subdue kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises. What do you think that made Abraham 20 years? The Bible says he staggered not in unbelief. He staggered that he didn't shift ground. What was in operation? They are these men, eh? these men, these men, they operated in the realm. But what they, what they had what they, is just a child's play concerning a, in, in, in comparison to what is coming to ahead of us. It's a child's play. Apostle Paul, the man go, they will see the kind of glory and the power that comes to the church at this present. The last the last, the last rate. He, he said that in the book of James, he said that God has given them, he's waiting for the, both the former rain and the, and the latter rain. The, the former rain. I mean, sorry, not the former, he said the early rain. The early rain is the one that came during the Acts of the Apostles. That's the early rain. And then we have the 
the latter rain coming together. Men who drew faith. It's not, it's not faith that comes by hearing <laughs> and hearing by the word. It's not that faith. But like I said, to get there, you have to start from the known. That's why you don't have to play. If you are still struggling, they, they say the word of God, he's saying, man, forget about the word of God. You are still in the flesh, calculating, do your calculation one plus one and all of that. And you are still arguing with the word of God whether you should be divorced or not, whatever. Somebody said that, uh, um, should I divorce my husband because I don't love him again? Is that not what they were asking you? Somebody <coughs> is a Christian. Then you are talking about the power of the world to come. Should I divorce my husband because I don't love him again? He called her or sent her text. Hello? Hello? Can you answer? What do you think that happened in Jesus in the book of John 11 concerning Lazarus? Death. And Jesus stood at the gate. After four days, Lazarus. What do you think was in operation? Gift. Jesus operated it. You think he so you don't need it. Eh? He, he, everything about him is supernatural. And you will see, you, I know what you are saying. Hey, but it's Jesus. Is it not Jesus? How many of you are thinking like that? Is it not Jesus? I know. You know what the Bible says in the book of Philippians, chapter 2. Let this man be in you, as he was also. Who though he was God, he did not count it robbery to be poor with God, but did what? He emptied himself of his divinity. He took the nature of man. He became man like you and I. He didn't come here as the son of God. He came here as the son of man. And he needed, he operated in the gift of the Holy So what about you? When there was tempest in the, in the, in the ocean, in the river, in the whatever, he was inside the boat sleeping. What do you think was in operation? Faith, gift. Gift of faith for deliverance. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Daniel. Esther. You think it's a faith that came by studying the word of God? You think there was a, they were catching revelation from God's word and then they had faith? He finished, he said, let me enter there. If I die, I die gift of faith. Without me, you can do nothing. It is not by might, it is not by power, but by my spirit. For by strength shall no man prevail. By strength, no man. So how then am I going to live supernatural by the power of the Holy Ghost? nothing more. You know why the suffering? You know why the suffering and all the agony and all the misery and all of that? You know why? Because we have not introduced the dimension of the Holy Spirit into our life. And they are there. So when you talk about the gift of uh, faith in the area of perilous time, tribulation and all of that. See Jesus Christ. Mark chapter 4 verse 38. He was sleeping. He wasn't perturbed. Daniel in chapter 6 verse 23. He was thrown into the lion's den. The guy was unbothered. 
the gift of faith in operation in the raising of the dead. You can't raise the dead without the gift of, the, of faith. There are three gifts that must be in operation if you are going to raise the dead. The gift of faith, the gift of working of miracles. I think I may just have to rush. The gift of faith and the gift of working of miracles and the gift of healing. Three of them in operation to raise the dead. And, they, and like I told you, this gift is not that one is working separately and all of They are two sides of the same coin. It is faith that called Lazarus from the grave. There is working of miracles. Remember that um, Elijah, is it not Elijah and the Shunammite woman? That Elijah was going for his whatever and he saw him and prepared a place for, for the man of God and all of that with Gehazi, Elisha. And so, finally, he had a, he prayed for the woman and the woman took in and then he, she had been buried. He took in and got a baby and then somewhere along the line, the baby died and she ran to Elisha to tell him, did I bother you? Did I complain about this? She said, I was on my own and all of that. And then you prayed that the baby came. See, the baby is dead. What did Elisha do? He gave Eli, uh, Gehazi his uh, mantle. He said, go and place it upon it. And he went and nothing happened. He came back and reported. And then Elisha went by himself. When he came, his walking of miracle, gift of faith in operation, gift of healing in operation, because what he killed that boy must be taken away. Because he's still on the body. So the gift of healing, the gift of faith, and the working of miracle. You know what he did? That's called working of miracle. You know that 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 um, that uh, blind uh, that uh, lame man at the gate called beautiful. John and Peter were going. They were going for a prayer meeting, and they saw that man. He said, "Look on us, silver, gold. I don't have what I have. I give you, and all that." And then it was gift of faith in operation. And then walking of miracles. There is this aspect of gift. You know, faith. You just have faith. The faith can, that comes from hearing the word, hearing and by hearing the word of God. That is another faith, another level of faith. But there is this. Uh, but what I'm telling you is that in these coming days, in this dispensation, this darkness that is coming, is not just going to be the gift of uh, faith that comes from hearing of the word of God. It is the supernatural gift of the Holy Ghost, the gift of faith that gives you an, un, 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 an unprecedented boldness and confidence in the face of adversity. You will walk through it, walk into it and walk away. If you see the kind of thing that is going to happen, I can see it, I can see it. Not with this physical, I, I can see it is coming. The church is going to be operating in the kind of supernatural. Eh? Sometimes I told you, sometimes we will be holding, they are looking for us to arrest us and all of that. We will be holding meeting here and they will come here, they will not see anybody. But those of them that are going to say are the people, because of, of not everybody. Some of people, some people are going to take off. Who don't have the operation of the gift of it. But those people, they are going to die like chicken. Just fear. The fear will collapse and crush your heart. I can't finish this. I have to go. Where did we stop? We still have working of miracles. We still have um, gift of healings. We still have uh, gift of prophecy, diverse kinds of tongues, and interpretation. We will finish it on Monday.
and I'm not going to do another one because if there are six credit loads. It's heavy. I beg of you. That is why anytime we are asking for you to come, please come for your sake, for your future, for your tomorrow. Don't mortgage today because of wanting pay the price. We close late and all of that. And you know this is nothing will happen to you. I said nothing. Nothing will happen to you. So if that is your worry, your pain and all of that, for there is there is price to pay. And the price they're asking you to pay is not a price of money or whatever. It's your time. Make your time available. And get what will save you. When that time finally comes, it is for those of them who were prepared. They are the ones that know their God. They are the ones that will do exploits. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you praise. We glorify your name. Father, we thank you as we come to the communion table. We bless you, O oh God. We give you all the praise for the privilege of partaking of your body and the very blood that you shed on the cross of Calvary. On that very day, you took the bread, you blessed it, and you broke it. and said, take it. This is my body that was broken. You send me same vein, you took the cup and placed it. This is the cup of the new covenant. As we eat and as we drink, we do show the death of our Lord Jesus Christ and his resurrection from the dead. I pray, Father, for the benefit of the new creation, the benefit of the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. May everyone that partake of this table let that grace be rekindled in their life. Bring them to a place of knowledge, a place of revelation, a place of wisdom, a place of understanding of the deep spiritual truth and grant everyone the, a grace and the enablement to begin to take advantage of all that you have accomplished for us. Roll away every blindness and ignorance. Roll away every timidity every cowardice in the name of Jesus Christ inspire faith that comes from the Holy Spirit the working of miracles inspire in us the gift of healings inspire in us the discerning of the Spirit inspire in us the gift of tongues and interpretation the gift of prophecies in the name of Jesus Christ Thank you, Heavenly Father. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' precious name we pray.